Okay. <laughs> Something is not right with that woman. <laughs> And uh, everyone started to notice, even the left-wing news, a Kamala Harris staff exodus reignites questions about her leadership style and her future ambitions. In this weekend's Washington Post, it goes on, one former staffer said, with Kamala, you have to put up with a constant amount of soul-destroying criticism and also her own lack of confidence. So you're constantly sort of propping up a bully. Wow. Uh, Talk about a head case. Well, we'll see. I want to bring in Seamus Bruner. He is the director of research in government accountability at the Government Accountability Institute. He's written extensively on uh, Washington politics and strategy, and he knows this subject very thoroughly. Seamus, welcome back. How are you? Yeah, it's good to be with you. Does she have a drug or alcohol problem? <laughs> well, she has an authenticity problem, that is for sure. It, it very much reminds us of Hillary Clinton, just the cackle. And, uh, yeah, she's not having a great week. Her good friend, Jesse Smollett, who she said was the kindest and gentlest human, is on trial. Uh, and also her staff are running for the exits. Well, th I don't mean to make light because substance abuse is a real thing. And if she does have a problem, and I have heard through high-level uh, sources that she might have a problem. And if she does, I hope she gets help. Uh, but her erratic behavior and everybody running, do you think, look, we've heard the rumors. They don't want her. They want another vice president. Now, you, <laughs> the only mechanism they have would be impeachment or resignation. Do you think she lasts an entire term? It's really, frankly, amazing that we're talking about Kamala not lasting an entire term. I think that that's a, that's a possibility. Um, I think this whole situation is a testament to the just common sense of the American people. Nobody wanted Kamala. They forced her upon us. She couldn't even get two percent polling, and that was before we found out what her what she you know her staff experienced. Now that we know that she's destroying souls in the vice president's office, uh, yeah, I think they want her out as soon as possible. Why not? And uh, I guess, what do you do? How can you make that happen? Well, we'll see. It's kind of unprecedented. Uh, Spiro Agnew, I think they didn't like him very much, but <laughs> he was indicted and he pretty much had no choice. So this would be a, a Meghan Markle move, you know, go to Netflix, make money, something along those lines. Yeah, I, I can't imagine uh, how, they, how the polling is going to, you know, turn out in 2024. I mean, if she's going to run in 2024, they've already said Joe Biden's not going to run. This is this is just chaos. And uh, it's sort of fun to watch. So your uh, most recent book or the one that came out in July of 2020, Fallout, Nuclear Bribes, Russian Spies and the Washington Lies that Enrich the Clinton and Biden Dynasties. Calling on your expertise there, you know, Joe Biden is supposed to uh, Call up Joe, uh, call up Vladimir Putin tomorrow and plead with him not to invade uh, Ukraine. And I think he's going to lay out a couple of uh, positions, what we want, I guess, Putin. I think we might have a quick summary sheet of, of all of that. Do you think Joe is um, up to such a phone call? Uh, we know that he can't appear with him on the same stage uh, confidently the way other leaders have. Uh, what do you think? How, how could this call go? Yeah, Joe Biden has no credibility on Ukraine or Russia matters going all the way back to his time as a senator, but certainly as the vice president. He has no credibility and Putin knows it. I mean, the, the Russia reset, is, it's covered extensively in the book and all of the many, many failures there. That all began when Vice President Joe Biden in February 2009 announced that it's time to press the reset button with Russia. Now, Russia had just invaded Georgia at that time. So there was no reason to be giving them any sort of deal, let alone what transpired under the Russia reset. Under the Joe Biden, uh, Barack Obama Russia reset, we canceled missile defense. That was a huge win for Russia's military. We scrapped nuclear uh, defense treaties and we cut our own nuclear defense capabilities to favor Russia. And we actually, Joe Biden in the situ situation room, made the decision to sweep the Russian spy ring under the rug. There was this thing called the illegals program, 
uh, a spy named Anna Chapman kind of became the face of it all. Uh, she was on the cover of Maxim. All of these Russian spies were in the United States. They had infiltrated the highest levels of American politics and finance. And Joe Biden, in the Situation Room, said, we need to sweep this under the rug because, quote, we don't want to create a flap with Russia. This was according to Obama's own defense secretary, Bob Gates. He wrote about this in a memoir. And that's just in 2010. Now, that failed Russia reset leads us to the crisis in Ukraine with a revolution. Joe Biden gets put as point man on that by uh, President Obama. And what does Joe Biden do? He leverages foreign aid to help benefit his son, Hunter, who is taking a million dollars a year from a corrupt Ukrainian gas company. The Bidens have zero credibility in Russia or Ukraine. Putin knows this, and I think that's why he's bringing troops to the border in Ukraine, because all around the world, foreign policy dump dumpster fires abound. I mean, you've got China and Taiwan. We're not going to be sanctioning the Iranians for their nuclear program. It's really unbelievable, but it's deja vu all over again. You know, fake news may be afraid to report uh, Hunter Biden's issues, but I don't think Putin is afraid to know about those issues. And uh, I'm sure he knows about them very, very well. Listen, Seamus, we appreciate it. Once again, Seamus Bruner, Director of Research at the Government Accountability Institute. And uh, to be continued, sir, we'll be right back.